Are you wondering if you need to get a stronger laser engraver for your small business or hobby? Wondering if it's worth it? If so, the Creality Falcon 2 might be the option you're looking for. Here I've got the 22 watt laser Creality Falcon 2, also available at 40 watts. Before we get into all the cool stuff, you gotta check what this machine made when I use it for engraving wood, stone, aluminum, stainless steel, even canvas, and some cool cutting projects too. The machine's price is always changing, so you can find the best deals in the links in the description below. So let's begin. My favorite part about this machine is the unboxing experience. It was the most simple engraver unboxing I've ever done. The machine is literally already assembled in one piece. Just had to take it out, add the legs to it, and then add the laser module onto the machine by screwing these two knobs into place. Even the air pump hose and electric cables have already been prepared. You just have to stick the ends to the engraver and the air pump. Depending on which option you go for, you could get an extra engraving honeycomb bed, a rotary roller, and an enclosure box. If you don't have a honeycomb bed, I strongly suggest you get one because it's a massive help in preventing your materials from overheating and charring. It also helps protect your table from burning. The enclosure box is also very important and I'll talk about it soon. You get the basic accessories like a toolbox, a microchip that goes into the machine, a USB-C to USB-B cable to connect your PC or laptop, a leveling unit, power supply, and of course basic instructions for all of the machinery. The laser engraving machine itself has some extra features, some of them are amazing, especially the limit switches. Normally at this price range all machines have limit switches, but normally only one for the Y and one for the X axis. This machine has two for each axis. This becomes important if you mess up the machine coordinates and then home it. Normally the machine will ram into the corner many times damaging some of the parts. But with a limit switch on every side, it will immediately stop moving when it reaches a corner so the machine doesn't crash. Then you have double layer drive belts to keep the machine accuracy high and reduce machine backlash at higher speeds. This with a super bulky frame and you don't have to worry about sturdiness for a long time. What about these buttons in the front? Are they useful? Well, first of all you have the stop start button. And also some directional buttons to help get the perfect framing for your material. I actually haven't used this feature much because I've mainly been controlling it through Lightburn. Speaking about Lightburn, connecting the machine to it is very simple. Once you connect the cables and turn on Lightburn, just look for the device and it finds it quickly and then you're ready to go right off the bat. You don't need to do any configurations, just pop the material in and get going. Of course, finding out the perfect speed and power settings depends on the materials so you'll have to do some testing there. But I've already done the tests on all of the core materials so you can just look at these numbers as a reference for yourself instead. Here are the tests done. On the left is the speed of the machine in millimeters per second and on the top is power. On wood, it entirely depends on how dark you want your engraving to be and on the thickness and type of your wood. On stone, the fastest result was white and clear at maximum speed and 40% power. Best results for aluminum was maximum speed and 20% power. Stainless steel, I got a lot of different colors, but replicating the colors is really hard. You need to make sure you have the exact same distance between the laser and material every time and that the piece of steel isn't bent at all. But getting a black color on stainless steel was achieved at 150 millimeters at 100% power. If I zoom in on the results, you can see that at higher speeds the edges have some small but visible deviations, compared to the slower speeds that look perfectly square. This is most likely still because of backlash, and you can solve this problem by tightening the drive belt. But anyways, when engraving anything that's at least medium size, you don't see this problem. For example, here's a canvas, this was printed at around maximum speed and 20% power. You don't see any backlash signs. 
Another thing I forgot to mention that's pretty cool are the lights on the laser module. You have three of them, air, fire and lens. If the lens is dirty, it will go from green to yellow to red. Fire will flash red and bad airflow will also start indicating red. It can be pretty handy and whenever you want to recheck slash calibrate it, just press the reset button at the top of the machine. A lot of projects that I made and you will make produce a high amount of smoke and toxins. That's where the enclosure box comes into play. It's very important and helpful in these situations. This is how the room looks with only a window open for ventilation on a tough project. Pretty smoky. And this is the same project but with an enclosure box. If you plan on working in a room where the engraver is operating, you definitely need good ventilation. I've been using Creality's enclosure box for a while and it's been working great on all the laser engravers I've tested, so I'm pretty happy with the design. It's simple and has a hose coming out from the back with a built-in fan. The sad part is that the fan uses a USB plug, making it harder to find a place to connect it. But I found a nice extension cord with USB ports in it and it works just fine. The box isn't 100% perfect, fumes still come out of it from the bottom, but nothing significant. I have a link for the box in the description below. Now one thing you need to know about stronger laser engravers is that they can get pretty noisy, especially the air pumps, for example the Falcon 2 air pump. It does the job and gets nice airflow but can get a little too noisy. As for the machine itself, its noise is medium loud. But what's cool is when the machine isn't doing a job, it automatically enters sleep mode and goes quiet. Most other machines I've tested so far don't have this feature. Let's talk a little more in details about the engraving test done and any problems or advantages I've noticed in the machine. First of all, leveling the engraver is more or less simple and you have a high amount of control to go up and down when adjusting. You unscrew the knobs a bit, insert your material, then insert the leveling unit. As long as you're engraving, you use the highest option. Then tighten the knobs again and you're ready to go. Framing the parts is just like any other machine, but an important disadvantage the Falcon has is the laser spot size. It's at 0.1 millimeters, which means a DPI of 254. Most higher end engravers get weaker accuracy because of the increase in power, and 254 DPI is considered low. You won't notice the difference much except when engraving small images. Vectors and large images aren't affected. For example, this aluminum piece with Black Panther. It's fine, but you most likely will get better results from a cheaper, more precise engraver. Most of the time you aren't engraving small images though, so you don't face this issue frequently. For example, here is a vector image of a Kung Fu chicken, engraved on MDF and painted. And the lines are all crisp clean, with no signs of inaccuracies. The same applies to this baseball player vector image. Ignore the squares and corners, those were just for tests. I also engraved an Iron Man image on some stone and it turned out alright. But once the image is large, like on this canvas, then you see the beautiful details. Where the machine shined in my eyes was when I was cutting different wood thicknesses, especially when making this hexagonal shaped ball. I had to cut out around 50 circles and 50 attachment parts, and you can see that the parts are quite small. If the machine doesn't cut them properly or accurately, they will end up breaking, and, and I will cry. But the machine did great, and there were only a couple of pieces that needed a little bit extra work to get them out. Another great example of the cutting was when creating this map. Look at all the small roads and details and the machine cut them out perfectly. And here are some mini coasters. A problem I noticed in the machine was in cutting deep and thick wood. I tried to cut out some squares on this piece of cherry wood, 1.8 centimeters thick, and it needed two very slow passes and it barely got cut at the bottom. Creality claims that the machine can cut 1.5 cm basswood. So perhaps 1.8 cm cherry wood, which is double the thickness of basswood, is a little too harsh for the test. I also tested the rotary roller out, which was much easier to set up than I expected. Just had to remove one cable and plug it into the roller. And quickly type into Lightburn the following and it was ready to go. Here is a cup with a mini phoenix image on it and it came out great. So overall I'm extremely happy with the machine results and I would recommend it without any worries. 
That being said, I'm also comparing this machine with 5 other 20 to 40 watt machines soon to find out if it's the best or not. So you might want to check that video when it comes out. And the final thing to talk about is the machine safety features, like the emergency stop button, tilt feature, and fire detector. When cutting the cherry plank, at some point I tried to make a mini flame and the machine detected it, but it didn't stop engraving, it kept on going. So that could be concerning if you're engraving deeper and slower jobs, and is a great example of why it's important to always be close to your machine while it's running. And that's it from my side, if you want to know more about different DIY machines and best laser engravers, make sure to subscribe and have a super creative day.